All right. Welcome to the goat shed. Uh, today we want to talk about relays and switches in pinball machines. Now the relay, without doubt, is the heart and soul of a pinball machine, and of course the switches that were within it are extremely important. So let's just show you some of the different types of relays that are available on machines that we see from time to time. So here we have, that's the original type mag relay that they used in the early 60s games. It hasn't got a coil in it, but uh, they had a, a long throw and they operated quite sufficiently and, and easily. As time progressed, they ended up moving on to the smaller type relay, such as here, which is the AG relay. Now, a much shorter throw. Let's get it so we can see it. A much shorter throw. At, of course, it has the same desired results. Now, there are other types of relays, of course. We have... A latching relay, that's one style. There's no latches on that, but it has two coils. So one, one engages and one releases to hold the switches on for a certain amount of time. Sometimes the whole game till it's reset. And then we have the other type of relay, which is an interlock relay, such as the Gottlieb uh, AX style relay, AXBX style relay, where they relied on a very short throw to lock the relay in and these can be quite problematic. Uh, other videos have been done on adjusting these, but essentially they operate by latching it down and releasing it. Latching and release. And they must release quite cleanly. So that's one type. And that's Gottlieb and then Williams. Ah, the Williams relay. Much better relay, in my opinion. They're bigger in most cases. Now, they call that a Z relay. The reason is you can see the Z there on the coil. Well, it's upside down, of course, but you can see the Z there on the coil, and that's an effective relay. And this is an M relay here next to it. It's got the shorter throw, but still the similar type of setup. Now, how a relay works, uh, an electromagnetic field is produced by the windings around the coil. That pulls in... The armature plate and the switches change position, just like that. There they go. They're all normally open switches. Now they're closed. So the action of one simple operation in that regard of that ladder can change four things in that game, essentially. So as you can see, they're a very important part of the pinball machine. Now... These require a bit of TLC. So what happens is, is that we need to clean the switches quite often and adjust them. Now, I've got a helper here, which is Graham. And what we will show you is before we make any adjustment to the relay, we tighten the switch stacks. You can see even they were a bit loose because they shrink, those um, insulators shrink over time. Okay, then what we'll do, once we've tightened those switch stacks, we'll take a file and we'll lightly run it through the switches, just once or twice there. Same on the back, if they're normally all normally open on those switches. That's a, an N relay we've got in our hand there. That's a point scoring relay. So we'll talk a bit about that in a moment. And then if we need to adjust any of the switch blades, what we need to do so we need to get our switch adjusting tool and always put it on the shortest stack and adjust the stack. The shortest stack. Not the longest, the shortest. That's very, very important. Now, another thing that we find that you often have to do is on the bottom of the relay, you have this little piece here. And we often just put a file in between the plastic bar and the metal, just like this. Sometimes you get a bit of a, a nick on there and it'll when you feel the relay after that it's it'll grease too. It, it's and grease, yeah, that's right. It they get dirty and the relay operates correctly. Now whenever you're looking at a relay, you always should look at all the wires, pull them and make sure they're not loose or broken away from the switch blades. Yeah. 
Now, and you do the top spring for the top tension. Yeah, it's you can retension these, and that's a matter of that's what we're doing now. Just a slight bend on the long blade to make it come back properly. Got to remember the spring on them; they're years old. You rarely have to change that spring, but um, it's just a matter of re tensioning the blades because they lose their tension over a period of time. Okay, now another thing that often is asked is how do I test a coil? Well, this is quite simple. You require a multimeter, um, just a simple one uh, is, is required, and you hook onto one side of the coil and we turn our meter on and we put it into the mode so that we can hear continuity with a beep and test it. Now that coil is more than likely okay, but if we wanted to check that coil for ohms, and this is a 9735 Gottlieb coil, I think they work at about 15 ohms, we just put the meter on there, up it'll climb, Hang on, there we go. He's got he's there it is, it's 15 ohms. He just didn't have his finger on there, right? Okay, so we can take that away. We're happy with that coil. Now bear in mind if a coil measures out at one ohm or less, it's generally bad. Coils just don't go bad. They the wires inside of them rub together, the insulation rubs off, and that's how they burn out over years. Obviously, flipper coils, pop bumper coils are the more common that go. Now within those relays there are switches and those switches are called by a name form A, form B, form C and form AA. Now what does this mean? Okay here we go. So a form AA switch is a normally open switch and that's the symbol for it just there where you can see. A form B switch is a normally closed switch. A form C switch is a make-break switch. And there's actually a form AA switch, which is a make-make switch. Now, an example of a form AA switch is a, a target on a, a game. It may have a, a switch to trip the uh, trip bank relay, turn off the light, and at the same time score 50 points. Uh, another example of a make-make switch would be on a, a Williams uh, machine where the left flipper turns on the, the game and the flipper, turns on, not the game, the, the lights and the flipper, puts the power to the machine. In other words, it engages the lock or the hold relay. Now we just spoke about a switches, how you adjust them with the short blade, which is very, very critical. If you get that wrong, you're going to have some problems. You bend the switch. So typically a switch such as here has to have electricity pass through it. Now that switch will not work till it's closed because it's a normally open switch as we can see. The only way that switch will work is if it's closed. So the electricity can flow through one side and out the other. The switch blades can also have the contacts spinning on them so those contacts can actually spin. So if you've cleaned a switch and it seems to work all right for a while, then the same thing happens. It's quite possible that one of those contact pads is spinning, therefore it's not able to keep the current to the switch, drops the current and you lose the functionality of that switch. So if you, that does happen to you, Check the back of the switch. You can see it spin, and what you would do is if you didn't have another contact pad, you could always put a dobber solder on there. So you've got to look out for that. So that's the, the switches. So the form A, form B, form C, and form AA. Now, what happens is people read a schematic, and what they do with a Gottlieb schematic, you'll often see this next to the, the relays. Not necessarily those numbers all the time, 
But in this case, 3A, 2B and 1C, 3A simply means three form A switches which are normally open, two form B switches which are normally closed, and one C switch which is a make break switch. Now I'm not sure if I mentioned a little while ago that a make break switch could also be classed as a single pole double throw toggle switch. So that puts it into a little bit more understanding for anybody that has had anything to do with those switches. So another important thing that you must remember when you're dealing with these games is that the relays have different values, the coils. Now, we're looking there at a Gottlieb 9746. Now that's a series relay coil. They're used in a lot of games in Gottlieb. And the idea of that is that often you might say, for example, have rollovers at the top of the game, A, B and C. Now, what occurs is that when the ball rolls over one of those rollovers, it triggers a couple of actions, and that one might be to turn off the light and to score points. Turning off the light is handled directly from the relay coil itself, and the, and the scoring is then sent off to the series relay so it can do the work and send the information to either the 10 point or 100 point or whatever relay. Now those, why are we talking about these is that we see in the goat shed here, a lot of games come in where people have replaced that particular coil with say a 9740 coil. Cause it's only to them, that's a 9746. Oh, a 9740 has to be similar. Well, it's far from it. A 9740 coil, I think, is around about 26 ohms or something like that. These particular coils are only 2 ohms. As they're wired in series with the other coils, which are A1118s, which also are very low in ohms, you cannot pass the current through a 9740 or 28 ohm coil. It just won't work. So keep that in mind about a series relay coil. That's very, very important. So when we talk about measuring coils a moment ago, what we probably should have also mentioned is that if you do get a bad coil reading, sometimes it's because of the way the circuit is in the pinball machine, they might be, you might be getting a reading out of another coil. Often it's the case you need to disconnect one side of the coil off uh, the lead, so um, meaning the power lead or the common lead to, to get a proper read. Sometimes in trip banks that's necessary as well. That can also be quite important. So just bear that in mind when you're dealing with, with, with coils. Now the other part of the relay that we didn't really talk a lot about and we need to is on the AG type relay or any for that matter, the components of the relay are we have the, the frame and we have the ladder and on the back of the ladder is the armature. Now you take games like early 60s Gottlieb games where one point was the most common score. That armature is going bang, 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 hitting all the time and it's hitting, the back part of the armature is hitting that part of the, of the coil. You get indentations and they can stick. So sometimes you need to remove the switch stacks and take the armature plate off. This of course applies to any pinball game, whether it be Gottlieb, Bally, Williams or whatever. If it's badly scored, you can get the Dremel tool out and flatten it off or they can get residual magnetism in them. Now this does pop up from time to time and the way to check if you've got a coil you feel has residual magnetism, once it plays up, turn the power to the game off and watch and see if it releases then with, with no power or it delays, it might, be, it might release two seconds, three seconds later. Now the way to check for residual magnetism is simply to put between the armature plate and the coil, a piece of 
say, insulation tape, something that will just stick there to figure out what's going on. You do see this from time to time. So that's another important issue. Well, look, uh, we hope that that gives you a better insight into relays and switches. That's a fairly brief video and perhaps hard to understand for newcomers. But of course, given time, practice and patience, you will achieve your goals in repairing your pinball machine. So this has been another Goat Shed presentation.